The mystery about Harold was always something that all of us in the family were sort of aware of. Everyone talks about it and everyone has their theory. If you wanted to hide a body, 1934 was a good year to do it. Well, hello, fellas. What a unique project this is, honestly. You're going back to a teeny kind of scary town, in my opinion, <laughs> um, and just using your total lack of credentials to investigate uh, the disappearance of Mike, your, your relative. Yeah. Uh, this is one for the books. I have never heard anything like it ever. So congratulations. Um, yeah, let's get back to credentials. What did you have besides uh, like great curiosity? <laughs> you pretty much nailed it on the head. We had no credentials, uh, but for Jackson and I, we watched enough true crime that we kind of saw how the actual detectives in those shows and kind of how these journalists and uh, filmmakers work and how they get the, get the good. So that's basically what we used is we just consumed as much true crime content as we possibly could. <laughs> wow. Did it creep you out? I mean, all right. So here's the thing I want to know. You asked the public for information up there. And um, you got some some cat calls and disparaging remarks and whatnot. Were you at any time scared or in danger? I don't think in danger. I think, yeah, the, the angry phone calls definitely leave you with a, a bit of a nervous energy afterwards. But mm -hmm. we knew that we weren't, you know, breaking the law. We weren't doing anything illegal. Uh, and, you know, you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. So we weren't too, too, uh, we knew we weren't going to get through it scot-free. So, but no, yeah. like, I think we, some of the show can paint Minden in a little bit of a darker light, but it's honestly not that scary. Good. Because <laughs> I, I just remember. knocked it off my bucket list to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a chance. Go stay at the Dominion. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's one well, thing we didn't do was actually stay in the, the rooms at the hotel. That would be interesting. Are we in the right place? Oh, yeah. Everything's wood. Is that supposed to be like that? Yeah. My name is Mike Milden, and Harold Heaven was my great great uncle. I'm Jackson. He's going to help me solve the mysteries of my best friend. We're just massive fans of true crime. We have a great mystery. Now, among your, your detective skills, uh, you created um, the drunk walk home. <laughs> to time the situation to see if any of the uh, uh, workers could have done it and yeah. still have enough rage after a long snowy walk. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that, that one especially was one of those ones uh, where I, th I, I think there were so many moments in the show where we chose mystery over comedy. And that was one of the times where I think Jackson and I really just wanted to do this uh, to see how, how like the scene played out, um, and there the footage was just so awful to rewatch for Jackson and I because we don't remember that, <laughs> night that uh, and the director loved it and they ended up making it in the cut. But it was one of those times where he's like, uh, it, our director Tim Johnson was like, "This is not going to move the case forward, but I'll do it because you guys think it is going to be funny." And <laughs> to the, uh, it was great. It was it was a lot of fun, but you know, it's a very serious matter. It's um, a disappearance of of a relative in in 1934. Absolutely. Uh, that's worried the family all these generations later. Um, you know, it, it's very striking, and you felt obviously a commitment to your family and to your own curiosity. And uh, Jackson, what was your commitment? Uh, my commitment was to Mike, basically. We're best friends, so as soon as he asked me to do it, I knew that I had to be all in or, uh, you know, it wasn't worth my time for either of us. And then once we got up there, you know, I became attached to the Heaven family pretty quickly as well. They welcomed me in, uh, you know, with open arms and, and really wanted to solve the case and were happy to have me along for the ride too. So uh, my I really fell into it pretty quickly. Uh, I wanted to to lend an outsider perspective and, and be able to ground Mike if he was showing a little too much bias, but I pretty much <laughs> snapped right into the, the heaven family. Yeah, you you did get up to speak. You were just, you know, rhyming off facts. That was quite impressive. Can't say whether you're good detectives or not. You're cute. 
<laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> My family over the years has created theories. He was killed. A suicide. He left very suddenly, and his gun was gone. Small towns love talking. It's these stories that keep us questioning everything we know about Harold's case. Our job now is to take the family legend, the rumors, the campfire story, and find the truth in it. Another thing that struck me about uh, the series is that the two of your relationship is the working relationship, the personal relationship. It's also a bit of a, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, a bit of a love story between bros, you know? I, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. No, that was a real yeah. human element. No, I, uh, I've said, I said in the show at the end, uh, I don't know if you made it through all eight episodes, but I say it to Jackson, I, I couldn't have done it without him. Uh, there was, I was just too close to the subject matter and uh, I, I don't like. I don't like confrontation. I don't like a lot of things you need to do the true crime genre. So like yeah. having him in my corner was just like just the perfect recipe. And and I think we got closer along the way because I let him yeah. in this lane of my family that I don't think he's seen before. Yeah. Well, you you've been in the trenches together, so that always brings people uh, closer. I think. Um, now, Funny or Die uh, had has a co-production credit, and I'm wondering how obviously you work with them, but you know, what made them want to do a, a, a true crime comedy? Well, <laughs> yeah. It's funny at times. <laughs> yes. Well, one of the shows that we uh, loved and sort of inspired us to put our twist on the true crime genre was a show called American Vandal. And that's, um, which is a, a totally yeah. scripted version of a true, a funny true crime, right? And so that's produced by Funny or Die. And oh. we, had, we had a working relationship with them already because they had published some of our sketches and we had made videos for them. Uh, and so once Muse took on our, um, our production, we wanted to partner with an American to try and you know, get it sold in the States. And it ju just seemed like a great mix. Um, you know, they're known for comedy, obviously, first. And their website is, you know, post viral videos and, and articles and stuff like that. But they're long form. TV uh, department is very uh, varied. There's a, you know, they do much more dramatic work as well. So they're not just the, you know, funny or die viral video guys. That's fantastic. Okay. What's next? We, uh, we, we've definitely been thinking about it, but we've had our heads down for so long trying to like finish this project. And we only locked the, the last episode, episode eight, like two weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, it's been very like hitting deadlines and making put every, everything into this show. So we, we want to keep bending genres and putting twists, our own twists on things. Uh, so the next project, I'm sure we'll have a good spin on. We just don't know what it is right now. Well, I'm telling you, you hit the nail on the head with this one. It's really fascinating and quite unique. So congratulations, you. both of you. Thanks and say hi to your kitty for me. I know. It's going nuts this morning. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Aaron. Thanks. Bye. There's no theory we're not going to look into. That's the only way we're going to solve this thing. Like, this is really <laughs> professional, this stuff. They are kind when they undress me. <laughs> they have to put microphones on in my body. Harold's body doesn't go missing for 87 years without some help. We know foul play was involved. We can solve this thing. This area here is corrupt. Has been for years, it still is. It doesn't point to a suicide. Harold realized that he had been ripped off. It was maybe some of the boys that were building the highway. Rumor is that there's body underneath. And if the guy was going to be dumped in here, that's where you dump him. Whoa. Oh my god! Whoa. How would you feel if we actually solved this? Well, I think it'd be super. As long as you don't come back and tell me he's one of my relatives. <laughs>